something that I see certainly in myself and I think um, probably in, in most people, if not everybody, is um, uh, an incredible amount of energy um, that can be used um, for basically useless things. Things like making sure that people have the right perspective of us, um, making sure that people see us in the light that we want them to see us in. And um, just that one thing I've mentioned can occupy so much of our attention and... Um, <clears throat> It takes a lot of work to uphold um, the image of ourselves in the minds of others that we want there to be. Especially since there are so many others. Uh, if it was just ourselves, it would be difficult because we have all sorts of thoughts and perspectives about ourselves um, that we can't live up to. <laughs> Um, so add in to that equation all of the other human beings <laughs> and um, you know then it really is like a full time lifelong job and um, if we just stop to look at how to review how we're doing with that job that we probably started when we were about two or three um, if we're brutally honest with ourselves and think, okay, well, how, how successful am I with this? Am I any more successful than I was when I was five with all of the new skills I've learned, with all of the, you know, everything I've learned to, um, uh, you know, to manipulate people's perspective of me? Am I actually making any progress? And the amazing thing is, like, Probably not, uh, you know, basically. And um, even more kind of uh, heartbreaking, perhaps, is to think, well, just imagine for a second that I, that I at some point, am completely successful with that. <clears throat> just like a film, you know, there's tension all the way through, things go wrong, things go wrong, and then it all comes nicely together at the end. And then... Um, the man and the woman get each other and then they walk off into the, into the um, distance with the beautiful scenery and then the film ends just at the perfect moment. Uh, just imagine that that does happen. Everybody sees us exactly the way we want them to. Would we be satisfied? And again, the heartbreaking <laughs> thing is, no, we wouldn't be satisfied. So even if we succeed at it, we, we don't, it, it, isn't, it isn't what we actually want. We just don't know what we want, so habitually we go for things that we, you know, we may even have seen that they don't satisfy us, but we don't know what else to do. So just out of, you know, going through the motions, we just carry on the way we have been. Um, and then, unlike the film, if everything did come to a perfect completion, everybody loves us, we have our partner, we have everything that we want. Um, the difference between reality and films is that reality c carries on <laughs> and, um, you know, the next day everybody's annoyed with each other again. <laughs> so um, the whole, like, the whole project, and th this is just one preoccupation, the preoccupation of trying to get everybody to see us in a certain way. So something I see in myself is that, um, uh, you know, with this, um, you could say that a short moment of open intelligence, um, you could say that what it is is complete honesty. So we relax this need to save face, this need to um, contrive a personality that is not naturally there. And um, we are 
honest with ourselves and we uh, respect our own dignity exactly as we are rather than trying to be something that we're not. This is uh, honesty and it takes humility uh, to experiment with that practice of short moments repeated many times. Short moments of relaxing exactly as we are whenever we naturally remember. And um, it's amazing how that can affect uh, our relationships with other people and um, the depth that we can connect with others on uh, when we're willing to just be natural is just incomparable to the depth, to the relationships that we can kind of muster up by assuring each other and reaffirming for each other that <laughs> um, that the relationship is good even though both people really know that there's a mixture of thoughts in both people's minds I think we pro perhaps do that more in Britain than than other countries <laughs> not that it's not that it's any uh, it's just one way of dealing with it when you don't know that you can allow it to be as it is um, so yeah it, it takes incredible humility to be exactly as we are and courage as well <laughs> and um, and it's it's really exciting to experiment with with that for short moments whenever we naturally remember just to see what happens. You know, part of us wonders, well, if I let myself be as I am, uh, is anyone going to like me anymore? <laughs> and, um, you know, if I'm not, if I don't any longer act out this funny, easygoing... Um, humorous person that's never angry will people like me anymore <laughs> um, so, so it does take courage to just, to just relax and experiment with short moments and um, yeah so like coming to see sometimes people, people share through participating in the training that they share that perhaps certain afflictive states have intensified um, uh, and usually what that actually is is more that we're actually recognising that we've always had those afflictive states but have always just shoved them under the carpet um, and an interesting thing about, about afflictive states is that um, <clears throat> usually when we're distracted by them let's say uh, anger is you know, the one that Canis was mentioning but it could be any, any other one, like fear, jealousy. Um, I can't think of any others, but there's loads of them. So anger, um, usually when we're distracted by anger, anything that we do, um, any strategy that we have as a reaction to it, um, is usually with the motive of no longer feeling anger. So it seems on the surface as if the motivation is to, for our partner to finally understand that we're right and they're wrong, let's say. It seems like that's what's going on. But actually we want, we don't like feeling angry. <laughs> and we feel like if they finally understand <laughs> that I'm right and they're wrong, then I won't feel angry anymore. So it's an interesting thing to see that actually what, what, we're, um, what we're doing is not wanting to feel angry. So what becomes interesting when we take short moments to completely relax while we feel angry is that we recognise that we can feel angry completely comfortably. <laughs> that we don't have this shifting squirming, distracted, um, kind of 
abstract fear that something's wrong, that something needs to be done. There's like an, an urgency there that we can't put our finger on. So when we completely relax and we feel angry, we see that actually we can quite comfortably feel that incredible wrath and energy in our body and mind. And being comfortable with anger, we're no longer um, compelled to do things to stop feeling it. Which means that we can discern what to do for the benefit of all clearly, rather than just knee-jerk words and actions because we don't feel comfortable. So coming to feel comfortable with ourselves, with our anger, with our jealousy, with our everything, is absolutely um, the first and necessary step to be able to contribute beneficially. Um, and so it's great that it's simple to do that. It, it, it will take time to become assured in that. But it is simple. It's as simple as relaxing completely for a short moment. And so there will be times for all of us where, we've, where we just, you know, like maybe while we're speaking about it now, none of, perhaps for the most part none of us are angry. Or maybe what I'm saying is making you angry. <laughs> In which case, that's perfect. That's a perfect um, uh, opportunity to, to just test it. You might, you're here anyway, so you might as well, you have to sit through this talk, so you might as well experiment with what I'm saying. And, um, and then, you know, then you, could, then you don't have to co- ever come back again, but uh, you're welcome if you, w- if you would like to. <laughs> um, so, but, but no, but I'm being serious, because anger is, is so funny, anything can make us angry. You know, like, I've sat, watched talks and been just angry. And the poor person giving the talk is just, you know, doing their best to, to um, impart some, you know, interesting or valu- valuable information and just the way they speak or something. <laughs> I'm angry because of, of their voice box, which wasn't their, it wasn't their choice. They were just born with their voice box, you know. So anger can be just anything. Um, it's uncontrollable, just like all of our thoughts and emotions. You know, like we finally feel like, okay, finally, I don't feel angry with this person. Okay, great. Okay, finally, I've sorted that out. You know, and then bleh, it just comes up. Uh, you know. When we don't, when we really don't want it to, so, so yeah, um, it is really, really profound to be comfortable with ourselves, with nervousness, anger, fear, jealousy, confusion. To be comfortable, completely relax, because when you relax, you see that no, there's nothing threatening about it. There's nothing threatening about you to you. We don't have to run away from ourselves. It's very empowering to know that. And um, like Candice has said before, it's, it's the most unrewarding job to, to try to run away from ourselves because... We, we never succeed, nobody pays us for it, there's no prospects, it's boring, it's monotonous, everything about it is just a pain in the arse. So, um, so a short moment is like a, a self-dignified uh, resignation from that job. You're just, you're, you are not interested in doing that job anymore you don't know what's going to happen but you do know this is not the job that I want and to make it worse we've all been doing that job and been trying to live a life with its own jobs and tasks and people to relate with and all sorts of other things to do so it's just amazing we can 
that huge thing, we can just resign from it right now. Uh, the only way, the only reason we pick it up again is through habit. So then the next time we remember again, we completely relax and resign from that job of having to control the way we are. <laughs>